I just spent an hour making a video and it didn't work. So here's like a bunch of different videos split up. Today we're talking about complex numbers. And this is uh, section one. This is an introduction, okay? Ugh. So, square root negative one. The, the, you've been told you can't do this, but by now, you probably know that you, in a sense you can do it. Um, here's an argument against it. So, you could do square root negative one times the square root of negative one. Obviously, this is going to be negative 1, because it's square root of negative 1 squared. But you could also do, use the property that the square root of A times the square root of B is the square root of A times B. That, like the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 3 times 3, square root of 9, which is 3, right? Using that property, you could do square root of negative 1 times negative 1, right? Same thing as this. Get 1 of it, and then you get 1 equals negative 1. Then you're like, that doesn't make sense. That would imply 2 is 0. And then you're like, oh, you can't do it. You're done. But a way you can avoid it is you say... I is the square root of negative 1, like some variable i, but then you also define that i squared is negative 1. You have you say that it has to be negative 1, i squared. Then you also say that a times i, square root of negative a squared, <clears throat> because you can't use the rule to get this yourself. You have to say this is true in order to get anything good out of it. Or you could also say that the square root of negative b is square root of b times i for like a um, square root of b equals a and a squared equals b, right? Okay. So this is the idea. Using these properties, we can get anything you want out of it. So if I'm solving the quadratic x squared plus 1 equals 0, you can subtract 1 off from both sides, plus or minus square root, and x equals plus or minus square root of negative 1 is i. You could also do x squared plus 4 equals 0. x squared equals negative 4. So that means square root both sides, plus or minus there. x is plus or minus square root negative 4. It's the same thing as 2i because it's the square root of 4 times i, right? Using this. Or using... um. Yeah, using this, because 2 squared is 4, and the uh, square root of b, i is the square root of negative b, right? You could also do x squared plus 9, get x equals plus or minus 3i out of it, right? Now, you can actually factor all of these. All of these things, which Mr. Lawrence said you couldn't factor, you can factor every single one. So, how would you factor x squared plus 1? You factor it like x plus i and x minus i. Want to check? x times x, x squared, x minus i, minus i x, plus i x. Minus i squared, x squared, plus i squared is negative 1, the negative of that is 1. 
Oopsie. So um, now we have an idea for how to factor things we can't usually factor. So um, another example would be x squared plus 16 equals 0. It's the same thing as x plus 4i times x minus 4i. And another thing is going to be 4x squared plus 9. This is um, not equal to 0. 4x, plus, 4x squared plus 9 is the same thing as 2x plus 3i times 2x minus 3i, right? Because there is the square root of that thing. There is the square root of that thing times i. And the same thing goes for over there. Okay? So a squared plus b squared is a plus bi times a minus bi. You can check that because a times a, a squared, a minus bi minus a bi plus a bi minus b squared i squared, get over that a squared plus b squared. Yeah, see? So now some problem questions. Um, no, not problem questions. Uh, yeah, problem questions. Problem question number one. Solutions to x squared, um, 16 x to the fourth plus um, plus some um, sixteen x to the fourth plus nine equals zero. Uh, factor twenty x squared. Plus, um, one hundred twenty-five equals zero. Number three is to find the solutions. Um, no, solutions by factoring of x squared. Plus a hundred plus four hundred equals zero. Okay, find the solutions by factoring that, and there we go.